The antenna is the most important part of your wireless product. If that doesn't work, you cannot fix by software. Hello IPXs, we are at Embedded World 2025. We like to introduce you to new companies. We're introducing you to a new company here, Yuka from Radiantum, who says about themselves on their booth at Embedded World, Radiantum, wireless performance matters. Yuka, why does wireless performance matter? Well, uh, for me, it's a pretty important thing. Uh, I have been working in the mobile phone industry 20 years. And after that, we established a company. And uh, we m faced many times the problem that the, uh, the products that we saw in the market, there were just the issues with the connectivity. So you didn't have a reception, you have a breaking connection. And uh, we just de decided to make a company that actually solves that problem. So we help other companies to improve their products. And by doing that, it's, it's the antenna design and RF design. So fixing the issues, what they might have. Right, so we're talking antennas. Yeah. What are the issues today that a design engineer, I mean, we, we've, done, we've done videos with antenna manufacturers. Mm -hmm. Many people think that our community aren't interested in antennas. I know they are. Yeah. Antennas are important to them. They know that the antenna is the secret to getting the data off their device to where they want it to go. So what do you see as the problems? You just said the problems. So what do you see as the problems when today that Radiantum solve? Yeah, uh, basically the antenna is the most important part of your wireless product. If that doesn't work, you cannot fix by software. It's based on the physics. And with the physics, you can double the range quite easily if you have the expertise. So typically in the uh, current situation in, in the industry is that there's uh, tons of the options to off-the-shelf antenna. You I, think also... it, I think there's thousands. Yeah. I think there's more than, more than some. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And there's always an uh, integration pipeline. So what we see again and again and again is that somebody has taken the antenna uh, follow the integration guideline and then make minor modification because it's just a minor modification. But that minor mod modification sometimes is actually killing totally the performance from the designed antenna. Right. Because so you can make a small change, but it makes a massive yeah, difference. Huge effect. Okay. So uh, the reason is there that the antennas are actually designed for a certain purpose. and. It doesn't actually be this kind of multi-environment uh, antenna. You have to do some modification yeah. for the uh, antenna that it work. You yeah. can tune those to be working, but yeah. you have to have tools and expertise to understand it, how it actually works. Yeah, yeah. So how do you help solve that problem? Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, in the two ways saying that antenna is a dumb component. It doesn't understand are you transmitting or are you receiving. It works both ways as good as it works. Yep. So in the transmission, you can optimize the performance that it transmits well, but that's not enough. Because if you shout really loud, but there's a noise around you a lot, yep. nobody hears you. Yep. And vice versa, if you have the noise around you, you don't hear anybody else talking to you. Yes. So you have to hit also fix the part which is that listening to the others. The antenna works well, but it doesn't actually hear because you have noise around that and the antenna actually gets also that noise. Yep. So it's also that it's not enough to design a good antenna. You also have to be sure that you EMI, so this electromagnetic interference is not coming from your own device. Right. So you also fix that one. So basically what we do is mainly for the uh, battery powered devices, small antennas. And in small devices, every part of the device is antenna. Battery wires, the PCP layer. So it's a different approach. Uh, this is a you have a different approach yeah. to how you solve. Yeah. Right. We, we don't, you know, if you think about the antenna component, we don't we call it radiator because that's just part of the antenna. So the radiator is something. So even though you took uh, antenna for any of these big manufacturers, Tau Class, Edetronics, uh, TE connectivity, you still need to understand what you are doing because that's just half of the antenna. 
the other half is the whole device. Wow. And, and what we do is that uh, we create the uh, simulation model from the device. So you model the, all the details. So in PCP, you model all the layers. So we can import the uh, uh, PCP design files, import that to the uh, simulation software. And uh, if we have an antenna, we don't have to touch the antenna at all. We change the grounding path where the uh, currents are flowing back to the antenna in the PCP. So inside the flow, uh, uh, layers, yep. so that the ground uh, is good for the antenna in that size. Yeah, I understand. So we modify actually the layout, right? Not the antenna. Right. At what point do you then have to work with you to? Because that's a because you know people buy antennas off the shelf and then they have to assimilate them into their system. They have to do their tuning. They have to understand how how to do that. And there are many ways to do that. We do videos. We've done quite a few videos on different approaches to to, to antenna. Everybody says about antenna. I wish that uh, that who sell antenna. I wish that they'd uh, embed the antenna earlier in the process. You're describing a situation where you have no choice but to. Yep. embed the, <laughs> the, the very antenna into the process. So so where do you stop, where, at what point with that approach does a design engineer come to you and say, right, yep. how do I integrate your technology into yep. my system? Yeah. Uh, I have been doing now wireless devices more than 30 years. And no, you can't have been doing wireless devices for 30 <laughs> years. That cannot be true. Yeah, that is actually in this company 10 years. Uh, this year we will have a 10 year anniversary for the company. Uh, from my point of view, you should start the design of the product after your ID has given that, okay, it should be that this the, uh, device looking like, then you have your antenna engineers to check there because that is the most cheapest point to make the performance happen. Yeah. Because where the antenna is, the location is the key thing. If you place it wrong location in the device, you cannot fix it anymore during the de product development. Right. Because right. it's, once again, laws of physics. So if you choose wrong feeding point in the board, you cannot fix that anymore. Right. So it has an effect. Is it on the left? Is it in the middle? Is yep. it on the right? Yeah. So it has a really big effect on the performance. So this kind of concept design, what we typically do uh, when we start from the scratch, is that it's just the PCP, plain PCP. So basically a uh, metal plate. And then we place the antenna somewhere, which is good plate location. Right. If you place it wrong, you can lose more than half of the performance. Right. Now I am sure this is a very comp there's a very complicated answer to this question <laughs> because you've talked about physics how how do you decide what's the process by which you decide to do that because you say it's absolutely yeah. key so what is the process do you go about doing that and i'm sure the answer is actually really complicated yeah. so try and answer in a way that is yeah. simple uh, the first is the uh feasibility which the experienced guy can have a like a in a one minute hearing the idea what will be done so he can say no don't so, so do knowledge that. and experience really comes yeah. into play so it's like a it's like a one minute thing to say that you cannot do that because something because the experience tells you that, that you cannot do it uh, but then it's actually the uh, uh, concept phase where you place the ma main components that you know where your radio module is where your feeding point is on the board. So the RF is coming like, I have in my hand one, one of our technology demonstrators. So yep. basically you have a, the modem and then you have the uh, location where you feed the antenna. So it can be on the corner, it can be on the middle or, or wherever, but you put, decide that one, Right. where do you feed it? And then on the concept level, that's pretty, the simulation what we do there is a really, we have to optimize time. So we don't take all the details, but we do like a, a optimal performance, what you could have without any kind of this kind of uh, issues what will uh, decrease the performance. <clears throat> so that when you introduce battery, which has a wire or connector, all those are part of the uh, antenna, ground plane and good resonance. So it means that the antenna could have a good matching. Yep. 
but the actual all the energy goes in the board, not radiates. Yes. So what, that that's that bit when you started talking at the beginning about all that noise. Yeah. So the antenna's not just doing its transmitting; it's doing a whole bunch of noise. So it's whether or not you can hear the transmitter, as well as with all the noise that's going on, which is why you take the approach you do with yep. looking at the board first. Yeah. Right. Yep. And then then basically, uh, when the product development involves, you have all the details, so you know more about if you have a display, how is the mechanics structure is more mature. We will introduce more and more details on the on the model, making sure that anything what is added, the feature or modified, does not actually kill the antenna. Right. So first we design a perfect antenna without any kind of extra components on the board, and then we try to avoid those solutions which will actually decrease perfor performance. Right. Then it will go to the manufacturing, then we measure that in the lab and we optimize with the matching shirt with then the performance. So, and then it's ready for the certification. Right, okay, good show. Good, so that's a... Yeah, maybe this is a... Uh, we created this kind of uh, uh, device which is called Omnicora. We often get the... Say that again, say that again. Omnicora. So we get the request many times. Many times also in here in expression that we want to have a small antenna that works globally. Yes. That's, that's modern day request. We, and act we, we truly would live in a global yeah. world yeah. now. Yep. Well, most of the cases it's actually not true because certification per country, it's a really expensive thing. Uh, it can be done, but it requires compromises. So okay. this is the board from, uh, from the uh, device what we did for a technology demonstrator purpose. So. This has a Nordic Semiconductor 9151 uh, chipset, which su su supports the uh, LT LTM radio. And uh, it has also a GNSS, or actually GPS, so it's, it's an asset tracker. Right. So what, what we did and why we did this was that we wanted to make the actual global device, which is small. Yeah, so that's a module. Yeah, so this is, a, this is basically an asset tracker. Yeah. Uh, it has the... Uh, all the hardware needed uh, and the one antenna solution which is smart so with this device if you're in europe it's used the european cellular uh, operator bands uh, here and optimize the antenna performance for europe if you travel the us it will automatically tune the antenna to work in the US network operators. Yep. So for AT&T... So I was right, it is a global world. This is, yeah, yeah, it is exactly. I was going to get you back for that. That, yeah. was, uh, that was always going to happen on my own video. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, this is not often seen, this kind of smart antenna in a IoT device, yep. because people think it's complicated. Well, it is complicated and it's quite delicate to design so that uh, it will work that if you go to AT&T network for band 12, it works there. Uh, but you always, it's a compromise that if you optimize one thing, you will get the performance out from somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. So you have to have a certain stages what you can use in the network. And this, uh, based on the location where it is, optimize that one. Right. And when you use the GPS, it tunes also the GPS frequency. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so for our, for our viewers, you've just given a very, very, very good explanation of your of your technology and your philosophy, I think. Yeah, yeah that's you, more, that's a good, good way of putting yeah. that. You, you have a philosophy to yeah. antenna, which yeah. is, uh, let's make the whole system the antenna. Yeah. Let's yeah. integrate it right in through, mm. let's start early so we understand at the point where the transmitter is. So then what you've done, is you've taken that philosophy and you've created, for want of a better yeah. word, a module. Yeah. An cool. asset tracking module yes. that they can then, you, do they just buy this off the shelf? No, actually we don't We don't sell because we are an engineering and service company. Right, okay. This is just uh, because every customer has a unique uh, use case. Yeah. So antenna doesn't require the space. This has a 150 milliamps battery. So it doesn't, this, this is not suitable if you want to track the uh, like well global product yeah because you need to track for a month yeah the forever battery doesn't last yeah so this is we're in a global market yes you'll find yeah so probably you will need more battery then yeah. you design a bigger board but the antenna is doesn't actually the thing that what's what's limiting your device size so right. you can make it small if you do it antenna first I see. and this is like a good example that when this Nordic uh, Nordic Semi has uh, this uh, LTM M, M chipset now. 
we can actually make a variant without actually modifying the hardware except the tuning what we are doing for that smart one. We can modify this one with a uh, different firmware to support the NR plus detect new standard. So it's just a different frequency and the uh, chipset supports that. We just need to modify, so we don't actually modify anything from the antenna radiator. Right. We modify how we tune it. And we can also uh, make this that Nordic Semi just released that, that they will have the support for this uh, non-terrestrial uh, network, so NTN. So uh, there is a 5G NTN network, which is now 3G. We hear B -B. more and more about yes, this. Yes, exactly. This is, a, this is a really, really, very quickly, this has become a big deal. Yeah, it is. Like just witness. Yeah, and that, that's really started when when the, it was brought into this 3 GPB standard. So now it's standardized, and there's a multiple uh, satellite constellation there. Yeah, yeah. So you just we did a, we did a you can you can you can go onto our YouTube channel and find out we did videos with, ah, with Nordic right. Semiconductor. Yeah. We've okay. done two videos with Nordic Semiconductor about their yeah. off-planet communication yeah. Yeah, asset exactly. tracking solution. Yeah. So now you have a, like terrestrial network operators here. And uh, now you have also those in the sky, so you have uh, yeah. all the options to choose. But this, at the moment, is not working with the with the uh, S-band satellites which are there on the on the orbit already. But we can modify this one without touching the antenna at, at all, modifying this to work with the satellite uh, connection. Excellent, Yuka. Thank you very much for thank explaining you. your your knowledge about antennas, your philosophy about antennas, and agreeing with me that we're truly in a global market. Sure. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for the interview. <laughs> All right. Cheers.